right now in all ABC shops and centers is the 1993 Special Events Calendar from the Australian Tourist Commission. The Special Events Calendar gives you a comprehensive monthly rundown of all sporting fixtures, from amateur to professional, nationwide to local. Be a sport in 93 and get your Special Events Calendar free of charge from an ABC shop or center. Or phone 0055 for more information. And you're back with the Could Have Been Champions on ABC Radio. And uh, the song you heard was Evil Ways by the Santana's pop group. And uh, Rod and Ronnie was just out there. If you're as surprised as what we are to know that a Santana song, they could actually get down to 2 minutes 45. <laughs> Because Ian said it's 10 seconds to go. I, I said, know, no. we had the headphones off and the feet up and we lit the cherry woods and uh, we settled in till about 10 too. But uh, that must be a, a, a world's record. That must be a version they, they um, remixed for uh, Rocky Jockey stations. Oh, exactly. Because you can't go longer than three minutes, can you, on those ones? Because the Santanas did play once on a big outdoor concert with the Fleetwood Max, didn't they, in Australia? Oh, they played out at Calder. At the same venue where... The Gunners will be next week, Antonio. Uh, next Monday, uh, Sydney, it's uh, the day before. And, of course, uh, listeners right around Australia, the big Guns N' Roses special before 10 o'clock tonight. About one minute to 10, is that what you're saying? No, no. Hey. No. As we take you through the lives and times of Guns N' Roses. In fact, it'll be before 9 o'clock, before Bobby and Laurie. Oh, you've revealed oh, me, I guess. Oh, uh, good on you. Oh, L. sorry. B and L, Bobby and Laurie, coming in live. So and I've told them to bring or bring at least one guitar in so they can actually perform for us. Well, that's nice, Tony. Oh, that's, that's well, it's, it's live radio, yep. as you can hear. Tony, Tony, yeah. Leonard, your magic moments. Written on the back of an envelope. He's done this on a tram on the way in, I'd say. Yes, and um, now was it the race course or race presenter? who referred to a greyhound as Horatio, when I'm certain it was Horatio <laughs> as, he was, as he was doing Horatio. the stretching. No. Uh, was it the number plate that I saw? I've got them on the brain at the moment. G-N-R-O-O-O. -O -O. Guns and Roses. Oh. Oh. Oh, you know, but unfortunately, I think it might have been a nice car like a Mercedes or something like that going around. Um, yeah, two magics. Something that I hadn't seen for a long time, and I still don't believe that mm -hmm. uh, the statement to be true when people say, ah, oh, all you have to do with dogs, you just pick them up behind the neck and carry them off, and they're 100%. You know, they just don't feel it. You know that little sort of mm, yeah. soft bit? It just has <laughs> gone out of my mind, I don't know, that for 15, 20 years, until last night I saw someone wanting to move the dog, picked it up by the back of the by neck. By the scruff of the neck. By the scruff of the neck. Well, having a look at the dog, I just don't think the dog necessarily concurred with that, with that, that if you pick him up by the scruff of the neck, it doesn't hurt. In fact, the dog looked decidedly pained and rather uncomfortable about it. Uh, but there you go, I just didn't see anyone just go, ah, come over here, um, bull, oh, no. bully. Bully. Oh, it was, oh, it was a bully. Oh, no, no. I don't know it was a bully. No, it had... Oh, I don't know what the name was. But it was just picked up by the scruff of the neck. Did it have a snap at the grabber? No, because the, the handler, the mentor, <laughs> no, was, <laughs> was in fact the owner. I looked at myself, do you haven't seen that in ages? And I'm going to just go, go like that and, and put there. So I just, I think humans must have made that one up. Uh, but um, this wasn't actually last week. I think, uh, I've been meaning to go with this for a couple of weeks. When all else fails, when nothing magical in your life just appears to be happening, a good old sit down about ooh five thirty of a week night in front of that circular spoke oh. frame of opportunity. Yeah. It is just it is magic, magic, magic. And um, oh yes, now, this, this, I've got a very good circular story actually. Here we go, listeners. You can play along with this clue. Up on the board was L dash C. Oh, hang, on, hang, on, hang, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. L Dash, dash L dash C, C dash N Is that all one word? C dash, yeah. So it's L dash C dash N. That's, yeah, we've got licorice dash, licorice on the top. No. Nah, L dash C oh. dash N. Yes. C A dash. Licence. Oh, oh, hang on, Ian. Sorry. On the bottom line mm. was P L 
blank. Yes. T blank. <laughs> can I buy a, a vowel, please, uh, John? <laughs> you certainly can. What, what vowel would you like? She's gone for you. <laughs> no, no. An E, please. All right. Bing, bing, bing. <laughs> bing. <laughs> so the clue now is L dash C E N C E. P L blank T E. <laughs> yeah, classic, yeah. Another vowel? No, 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 another vowel. And your answer is. I just don't know. Oh, I just don't know. <laughs> and I am screaming at the television. Uh, Lucent's plot. Lucent's <laughs> plot. Oh, fantastic. And oh. I just thought to myself, look, honestly, that is up there with your famed. Soda water. So, soap or water. <laughs> Look, I just I just kept looking at the tele and I was just imploring. The, her, and on a, I I think she might have been firing for some very natty outdoor furniture mm. too at the time. Mm. And it's just slipped through, it's just slipped through. But were you watching in a public viewing area? Uh, no, I was actually at home at this uh -huh. at this time. But um, I thought to myself, of the easy chances to snap up a beautiful outdoor setting that have gone begging through the hands of contestants right back from the mm. of the century. Mm. Uh, the Great Temptation, I mean, with Tone and Barbie. Yes. This was this was the easiest one ever, and it just went straight through. And the person just behind, honestly, salivating <laughs> as you fight up with license plate. Well, the camera, alas, did not go back to the uh, <laughs> ashen-faced loser. But I thought to myself, just, you know, I couldn't see how you'd miss that one. But, Co, oh. pressure is a funny game. It is a funny game. Actually, I, uh, I had a, someone come to uh, stay with me for a night. Yes. A couple of weeks ago, who uh, lives out um, in an area where they don't have power, hence they don't have television. So my friend doesn't get to see a lot of television. So when he came to visit, it was a bit of a, a uh, you know, a novelty. Like, like this singing corner. Yeah. Ma <laughs> making, making <laughs> pictures, yes. And, of course, you know, when you've been a few years out of the television viewing game, you know, you've probably not even been uh, all that uh, au fait with the use of the, uh, the remote control. And, of course, there are some people that can use the remote control. It's like, people, like Shane Warne can really bowl a leg, you know. Or Tim May can really spin a ball. Can really spin a ball. And, I mean, some people use the remote just to change the channel at the end of every hour. Now, I can watch it, though, because I am a leggy. Yeah. I can watch four programs at once. Oh, yeah, I do that. Yeah, you can, you can keep track of them. Yeah. We're both in the ad breaks. Well, I was watching the cricket, and uh, there was the circle it was on. Yeah. So, we've uh, got the circle. The cricket's on, of course. And they went to the end of an over and went to an ad break. So I banged it straight over to uh, Circular. And I don't think my friend's ever seen Circular. If so, only very rarely. And doesn't realise you can play along at home. Up on the screen, I saw in an instant, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight words saying, or phrase, you know? Oh, sure. Eight. Hey, we, we, there was gaps everywhere. And I just took one look at it. And I said, I said, you can imagine, end of over, and it's uh, two for 95 here. Hit the remote. Over to the other channel, I've gone, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Bang, back to the cricket. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Uh. And your mate's gone, what? <laughs> what, 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 you, what, you, what don't you want me to do? I said, don't worry about it. <laughs> I, I, I forgot. You know, he hasn't got the tally. He isn't an experienced remote player. But there is a, there is a touch of um, the humiliation factor coming into Circular Spoke. When you've got about $1,300, which gets you two vowels, sorry, two consonants, which invariably is a combination of R, S, or T, yeah. and a vowel E, it's always a phrase. Mm. And they don't use the word your name, any potential oh. for the word one. See, they got on the other night, they got, they got on the other night, see, when it got to the end, and you can buy the three, three consonants, yeah. and a vowel. R, S, T, E. Always R, S, T, E. And see, down there, the people that are, oh, yeah. they're making up the things and the sayings down at Grundy's, two words, thing. Right. So R S. Actually, I think license plate was under the category <laughs> thing. thing. Yeah, what does constitute a thing? <laughs> who, who used to be with? It was a twenty question. Used to be animal, med, vegetable, vegetable mineral, mineral. Yes. And thing. And thing. Well, the other night, same thing. R S T E. 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 Top line. Thing. Two. A T. 
and an E. Yeah, I'll give you your, your number of letters. Yeah, okay. What, 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 what was it? So it's uh, three, four, yeah. five, six, seven, eight. In your last two letters are T E, I think. Right. It's one word. And, and in the next word. line. Yes. I'm just having this. I'm thinking to myself, listeners. It's got a T on the end. You see that? Got, so you've got two, four, six, eight, nine letters on the top. Yes, T E. And the next line you've got seven letters with a T on the end. Right. So you think, oh, with R S T E, I'm going to get a few covered here. You only get a <laughs> Bing, Bing, <laughs> Bing. Only three <laughs> Bings, and it ends T E, and it ends in T. Oh, gee. What have you got? None. What was it, Ian? Chocolate biscuit. Oh, for goodness yeah, is sake. Is that a thing? Yeah, see, they... Well, well it, it is a is. thing. <laughs> They've had a good thing out the back. They said, look, right, let's get some things that haven't got R or S in them and a minimal number of T's. Mm. Well, actually, you haven't helped the, the, the listeners there because right. there's an S missing. Biscuit spelt with an S. Well, maybe you said R... Uh, <laughs> oh, <I'm not> <laughs> it doesn't matter, Ray. I, 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 and I, I can tell you something. Hey, when the cars come up, yeah. it's a 15-letter phrase <laughs> yeah. with no R, S, T's and E's. And I don't know how many expressions there are in the world, but um, not too many that wouldn't have that. Have they ever played circular spoke frame as a sort of like, you know, celebrity game like they've played the main yeah. event? The, the, the big, the big uh, yes, happening? They, yes, indeed. They? Yes, indeed. Oh. I think they should put you on it, Tony. Yeah, you know what would happen? Soda water would come, come up, up and I'd go, I'd go for a G with everything else exposed. <laughs> exactly. Now, I'm going to play a quick song here. Yes. Uh, your magic's finished? Yes. I had one quick magic for you. Yeah. That, that was one you reminded me of it. And the cricket the other night with them going out the dogs. One of the quick magic, I heard an announcer on the radio playing some songs. I won't say what station we're about to, or, and uh, played a set of songs, which is Quite often the way on many stations. Yeah. And no, 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 no. If no. you play a set of songs, it's uh, very much. All right, I'm going to break this. Oh, and a nice break. Well, this, this will put you on the track to what sort of station it was. Uh, uh, Kenny Rogers and Dolly Parton there with yeah. Islands in the Stream. Yep. Yes. And before that, Salt Water from Julian Lennon. And uh, he, he's a chip off the old block and uh, following the tradition of his dear old dad. <laughs> now, I wouldn't have really thought John Lennon <laughs> was a dear old dad. Dad, no, not really. I mean, if it was Natalie Cole doing one by her father, Nat King yeah. or something. Yeah. Sure, John Lennon, dear, yes. But dear old dad, a bit Yeah, dear old dad. It made weird. me chuckle, but I'm sure that um, radio announcers all around the country will now slip that into there for the when describing mm. John Lennon. Just describe mm. him as Julian's DOD. DOD. <laughs> Here's a quick song by uh, B&L, who will be in a little bit later. Uh, it's a disc one, hang on. Car thing. Graham, that's it. <laughs>
Oh, that's the way they used to make all records, didn't they? With those sort of quick finishes. And yeah. there's one from Bobby and Laurie called Through the Eyes of Love. And uh, we'll be playing... Some... What time are they coming in, Gary? Oh, around about 9 o'clock. Well, I'll be in before then. Of course, before 9 o'clock, Tony will be doing his Guns N' Roses tribute. And we've got a couple of cub reporters. We've actually got a trio of cub reporters. A few cub reporters. We've got a, 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 a... It's almost a handful of cub reporters. And we are going to do some mail. We are. We, yes. We promised we'd do some mail. Clear, clear, an absolute backlog. And to the person who addressed their letter to anyone other than... Here we are. Dear anyone but Simon. Who was that? I don't know, but they found their way into my little... Uh, see, it's about six months old. Yeah, well, I've got some old dated November and December and stuff, so it's much better clear some of that after the news. is coming up on ABC Radio in about 30 seconds or so. So if you... Uh, if you want to get, you know, some blank cassettes out into your machine ready to record Tony's Guns N' Roses tribute, be wanted to be for home use only, wouldn't it, Tony? Indeed, Co. Mm. You would have... Hey, good luck. Hi to all the boys from Guns N' Roses listening to the ABC tonight. <laughs> yes, they'll be listening because I'll be uh, wanting to hear the news. It's just coming up right now on ABC Radio. Stay tuned. We'll be back after that. Mr Paul Keating has shrugged aside private Liberal Party polling, which the Liberals claim show they would have won a federal election this weekend. Mr Keating said today the Liberals were being cocky as usual, claiming a walkover. But the Liberals' polling is at odds with the latest Morgan Time Australia poll, which shows the coalition dropping three points in the new year period to trail the government 43.5% against 42.5%. Labor was also down, but only 1%. The poll, conducted over the two weeks to January the 16th, also shows Mr Keating steady on 47% as preferred Prime Minister, while opposition leader John Hewson dropped 5% to 40%. The Australian Democrats Party is predicting a coalition victory in the federal election. Democrats leader John Coulter says he's based his prediction on the level of discontent throughout the country. Senator Coulter says a coalition government would be disastrous for Australia but is the likely outcome because of the Labor government's failures. The mood that one gets is that uh, the electorate is rather fed up with, uh, with Labor. They're certainly not believing the, uh, the sort of uh, statements that Mr Keating was making last week that the election is going to be fought on social justice issues because they observe that uh, uh, in general Australians have become less well off under Labor in the last 10 years. They see the large number of unemployed and they simply are not believing, uh, not believing Labor. And I think rather like uh, 1972, they're feeling that a change and a change to anything is better than what we've got. Westpac has finally chosen its new managing director. Ron Fuller reports the top job has gone to Wells Fargo Vice Chairman Robert L. Joss. The long-awaited decision on a new managing director was promised last week by the bank's chairman, John Urig. Mr Robert Joss will fill the position vacated by Frank Conroy, who left the Trouble Bank last month over the institution's recovery program. The American banker says he's excited by the prospect of joining Australia's first bank and the challenge of rebuilding it. Mr Joss faces a monumental task. Last year the bank turned in a $1.5 billion loss, as well as suffering a failed $1.2 billion Australian dollar rights issue. Westpac's chairman has already flagged one of the proposals to get the bank on its feet will be the shedding of up to 20% of the staff. With the recent bout of hot summer weather comes a warning about the danger of the sun and skin cancer. The warning has been issued by the Australian Nuclear Science and Technology Organisation, which has been pursuing melanoma research for more than a decade. More from Janet Grist. Anstow's Professor Richard Lambrecht says the highest risk group in Australia is fair-skinned, red-headed men. Statistics show men are more likely to develop skin cancer than women. Professor Lambert says men tend to develop skin cancers on their backs while they tend to occur on the legs of women. Melanoma is a tumour that is not particularly responsive to chemotherapy and once it's spread it's difficult to control. Professor Lambert's team at ANSTO is working on the synthesis of a class of selenium compounds which have the potential to provide a remission of melanoma growth. But the best advice is still to cover up whilst out in the sun wearing a shirt, hat and an effective sunscreen. 
Janet Bruce, Sydney. Hamset is getting serious about becoming Australia's next overseas airline. It's seeking approval from the government's International Air Services Commission to operate services to Japan's new Kansai airport from the middle of next year. Aviation correspondent Len Novak says Anset plans to operate 747 jumbo jets like Qantas that are capable of carrying more than 400 passengers. The jumbo will become the largest airliner that Anset will operate. And it's no secret it's seeking extra capital to finance the expansion. Possible investors are Singapore Airlines and even arch-rival Air New Zealand. Anset says only 50,000 Australians fly to Japan each year but Japanese traffic to Australia numbers 600,000. The airline believes that imbalance can be overcome with proper pricing. And it has already been granted rights to fly to Malaysia, and it's applied to fly to Hong Kong, Singapore, Indonesia and Thailand. A senior Anglican has called for the relationship between the British monarchy and the Church of England to be modified to reflect changes in society. The Archbishop of York, the Most Reverend John Habgood, said in a broadcast interview that if the coronation service was to unify the nation, it must recognise that Britain was an ecumenical and multi-faith society. And referring to the royal family's marital problems, Dr. Habgood commented that Britain had had, as he put it, some quite strange sovereigns with all sorts of private behaviour. But in an intrusive and prurient age, such things become matters of public concern. This is ABC News. And at five minutes past eight, right round Australia, you're with the Could Have Been Champions. I'm Ian Cover. With me, Simon Whelan and Tony Leonard. Richo having yet another well-deserved night off. And Greg is up in Tamworth for the uh, Country Music Festival. And we're hoping to hear from him in the not too distant future That's to it. give us the rundown on how things are shaping up in the country music capital country, and, it, mm. and in fact chance you've given the number out so often for people right around australia to call in the 008 number it is only a 30 cent call i would hope that you'd remember it and listening to colin munro this morning doing summer all over yes. filling in for macca heard quite a rundown on the events so far he was broadcasting from tamworth this morning what, what's what's happened up there ian Brent Parlane has won Best New Talent. Oh, Excellent. well deserved too. Also Thanks. nominated, I think, in that category were uh, uh, Colby Cannon, Fel Felicity Urquhart. No, won it last year, I think. All oh, right. Yeah. Mm. And a couple of others. And uh, you can't really win back-to-back -back Best New Talents, can you? No, no, no. no once you have been, <laughs> no, that's once you're the Best New Talent, well, very good point. Yeah, very good point. So, Champy uh, will have us give us all the rundown, and no doubt he's been swinging a few guitar-shaped. Pools. We do have some mail to clear. Yep, indeed. And the, we'll the be doing that tonight has been well and truly thrown down. Either. Simon, do you want to go back to June or something? Or oh no, no. I'm, I've uh, I actually got in a bit earlier today and uh, decided Open. you'd read some. <laughs> yeah, I did. I had a bit of a look at some, but was, I've still got a bit of a pile here. Mm -hmm. well, but keep them coming because uh, we do get around to them all eventually. eventually. Well, I've got a beauty here that I'll just uh, just knock over it to start off with from David Norton from Baldwin in Vic. And uh, as you'd recall, I uh, asked listeners, as I was listening to the uh, mega-hit song of the 60s, Hey Jude. Oh, no, no, no. Yes, and I, I thought it might have been repeated 100, 110 times, and then um, we had the discussion about whether it was a word or not. Well, here we are. My love. Indeed we have, Ian, from, um, from David, who writes, Regarding your comment on nah being the most commonly used nonsense word in songs, I would like to propose a band as being the quintessential non-word-using band. The band is Matter Lake. Oh, yeah. In their first album, Still Point, the first cassette I ever bought, <laughs> there is a song called 12 Pound Toothbrush. Yep. It's you. I don't think there are many other words in it, too. Or none that you can understand. No. Well, David's counted them. 180 times. Oh, they've got the money. On the same album, a song called Goodbye Lollipop. Yeah, I don't think there's anything, any words in it except Goodbye Lollipop. Is that has correct? Has the title words used 24 <laughs> times. <Yeah. laughs> Most of Metal Lake's entire repertoire is, if a song goes three minutes, it's two minutes of instrumental and one minute of na-na's or woo-woo's with the odd piece of English in brackets, I think, thrown <laughs> in. And um, the, uh, 
the, the song Goodbye Lolly, or that, that, that song 12 Bound Toothbrush, it's saying about getting up in the morning for my hard-earned breakfast, it's so hard, and I've got, I think, I'm not even sure whether they're the words. So, um, Matt Alake has taken, has assumed the mantle mm -hmm. from the Beatles as repeating a, a word or a phrase or a, a non-word. I was just looking at those uh, Australian More albums. Any, any other songs? I was looking at those Australian albums we've got there to get the Bobby and Laurie tracks off them. Yes. And I was hoping it might have had Matter Lake and a bit of 12 pounds to it, but so we could count them ourselves, but it's not on them. The only Glenn A. Baker's compilation only goes to about 1971, unfortunately. Mind you, in Tamworth, there may be some words and songs repeated over and over, like, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. No, does that? No, that doesn't even. That's more a, a sigh or a is groan. It? Nah, is can be no. No. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, Matt Lake. If anyone wants to chal challenge the uh, the Matt Lake title mm. as repeating something in a song more than 180 times, and all I can say, David, you must live an extremely rich and fulfilling life exactly. to um, to listen to that. Now, before we go into any mail, this is how we get a backlog of mail. We always just manage to do one letter and then something happens. Yes. Right. And what's happened is Champy has got through on the 008 number all the way from Tamworth. We don't, we don't want him to, uh, to waste his 30 cents. So we'll say, uh, Howdy, partner! How's things going in Tamworth? I don't tell my heart. My yes, yes. can break your heart. Hi, hi Kuda Banks. No, hello, Griggy. Now, Chance, how many times has Aki Breaky been done by buskers in and around the Tamworth area this year? Oh, I must confess, Tony, we've only been here 24 hours and we haven't managed to make it down to Peel Street yet to hear the buskerama. But I'm told, on good authority, there's a good dozen or 20 buskers already going flat chap down there. Now, how many people has, or the size of Tamworth, what does it swell to during Country Week? <laughs> There's 35,000 generally, and I'm sure that Explore Australia could verify that. Oh, yeah, I must go and get it. Oh, and, and Sam, Sam was one of my favourite entries. And it swells to about half a million, I think, uh, during the festival. Half a million? How are people... No. Oh, come, oh, come on. on. Yeah. That would fair think I mean people as far away as Adelaide. <laughs> Hey, and, and, and they stay at a motel in Adelaide and drive to Tamworth uh, every day. Hey, pull the other leg, mate. Hey, the blowy's got wings on him like a 747. <laughs> <laughs> uh, about 30,000 people, I believe, come in. About double the population. I have met people from as far away as Adelaide today. There's, uh, I've met people from Mount Gambia and from the Otway Ranges of Victoria and mm -hmm. far-flung places. Now, Greg, yeah. have you won anything? Well, I haven't, but I... Well, thanks for talking to us tonight, Sam. <laughs> have a great week. Yeah. Well, I'm up for, as I mentioned, I'm up for a couple of Clayton's Awards on Wednesday night. Right. Which, and what, what are they exactly? Simon referred to them in that usual condescending, nasty style of his... I was trying to stick up for you, Greg. Yes, you, you would too, Sorry. yeah. I was. Oh, yeah, yes, with the best ditty yeah. award. <laughs> and best, best performance at a trucking convention. <laughs> Actually, if they put on a ditty of the year, I'd have to be in the... make the finals, you would hope. Right, champs. But there's no ditty of the year category as yet, uh, Tony. But on um, Wednesday night at the Songwriters Association Awards, uh, as I mentioned last week, I'm up for, uh, um, I've got a nomination for Children's Song of the Year and for Comedy Novelty Song of the Year. Now, Chance, were you, were you present when Brent Parlane was named winner of the Best oh, New Talent? Okay, I was going to go with the, my excitement and give the spill the news and you already know. Well, oh, it's been uh, big news at Lithgow, I can assure uh, you of that. Well, have you not been listening to the ABC radio? Oh, uh, I was doing a gig. Oh, uh, no, this morning, at, on the 7 o'clock news, yeah, the 8 o'clock news, mm. and also Bill Rule was reporting uh, where I was listening from uh -huh. Tamworth, and Colin Munro yeah. was doing Summer All Over from Tamworth. Yep. He talked about Brent, he played some Brent tracks. We also heard the other nominations included Felicity Urquhart. Oh. Oh. Brian Winwood or something? Uh, the other ones were uh, um, uh, Kenya Kernigan, uh, Warren Derwent. Oh, that's, that's him. That's the guy you're thinking of. And, uh, of course, Shanley Dell, who's the sister of Jenny Morris. Yes. All right. So, well, uh, that's uh, stolen a bit of thunder, but uh, a, a, a regular on the Kuda Beans, a man who's appeared often on our music segment, a guy who's a, a very rare phenomenon in country, a and country artist from Melbourne. And a wonderful human being. 
Uh, to, uh, DWPF at Dear Warm Personal Friend. So where did, he, where did um, Brent receive his award as Best New Talent? They had the big turn, and it's the first gold guitar to go off for the week, in the Tamworth Town Hall. There uh, were about 600 in there. It was four sold out. And uh, I backed up Brent when he sang his song, and uh, I was on the harmony, and uh, he's taken off the guitar, gold guitar, and, well, it's almost like you won it yourself. I'm pretty, I was pretty excited. Yeah, actually, the song is it something about uh, is it something about the eyes or something. Or? Save a little love for me. Save a little love for me. I heard it played this morning by Colin Munro. Yes. And a very good song. Oh well, Ben Parain, you know, we've been uh, banking up his talents for well some years on the Cooter Greens, and this is a big thrill that he's got through, and that's the first gold guitar to go off, and another seven. So you, you're to a be big decided. Yeah, and you're, you're obviously a very big, as you say, you you are just so once again, you're a big fan of Brent Parain and a worthy winner. <laughs> oh yeah, well, in, in case I haven't mentioned it. I love Brent's music and... Um, so you don't like Colin Buchanan anymore, is that what you're saying? Uh, Are you bagging Colin Buchanan? Oh, uh, Bucko's still... Uh, oh, gee, now that's a hard choice. <laughs> two, two enormous talents. How's that for uh, uh, gilding the lily? Have you been out to Reg Pools for a swim in his... Well, I haven't, but I would like pool? to support you, because this... Uh, I wanted to keep this brief, gentlemen, because I'll do a big report next week, so I just want to... Rex Dallas has got the pool, hasn't he? Not Rex Dallas, and I did meet Reg Pool last night. He's another Victorian country music star. Yeah. But um, from the North, from Kyabam area... Now, I just want to do a couple of mentions from the uh, Country Music magazine uh, uh, and then do a bigger report next weekend. Okay, shoot. Right. The, what can you see, you may ask, at the festival this year? Well, go to the Tamworth Workies, and this is what their publicity says in the Capital News magazine. You can see, apart from Stan Costa, Kevin Bloody Wilson, John Williamson, and a show of country female singers, including Dennis Mar Denise Morrison, etc., in order, Wild Wild West, that may be some kind of bucking horse show, I think. You know, that, you know some sort of, you get on the mechanical horse. Mm -hmm. Something called Country Karaoke. Oh. Oh. There'd be a few doing achy breaky hard, I'd suggest. <laughs> now, these are in big letters in their big ass. And now, Ka uh, Ch Champy, when is the Country Karaoke going to take place, and where? Well, Tony, it's at the Tamworth Workies Club, and all these things I'm about to list to you are just one big list with no extra details, in this order. Wild Wild West, whatever it means. Country Karaoke. Next, a thing called Country Rock. Next, in huge letters, live bands. <laughs> Next, a band called Drink Promotions. <laughs> and finally, a band called Lingerie Girls. <laughs> oh, yeah, very good. So that's what you see at the workies. Now, you want something else, you may say? All right. Turning over the pages of Capital News, I want to tell you about another country music festival, and it's billed as Australia's smallest country music festival. It's at the Upper Horton Sports Club in Upper Horton. Where is that? Well, looking down the ad, it says, Upper Horton is half an hour north of Baraba on the Bingara Road. Thank you, Jim. And, and if you're heading there, who may you see? Well, you Bruce McCumsty. Well, Bruce is not on, but I'll come to that very shortly, Ian. You can see Key Country Band, Wattle Bath Band, Mount Isa Spinifex Country Music Club, and Popular River Swimming Pool Area. <laughs> <laughs> They're a good band, Popular River well, Swimming Pool Area. And I've got one more for you. At the Oasis Hotel in Tamworth, throughout the festival, according to that in the magazine, you can see White Line, Tommy Miller Band, Lorraine Fitzner Show, Peter Salata Band, Craig Robertson and the Heartbreakers, and Laurie D. Wet T-Shirt Competition. <laughs> what a great name for a band. <laughs> so the traditional values are still there for those who are into that kind of thing. Yes, I, I would say that Tamworth with it is all said and done, Jeff. When the veneer is just stripped aside, it is one big wet T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> See you next week, Tabby. I've got one more report. Okay. Yeah, one more thing. From the... Yeah, I, I can't wait to hear the big report. <laughs> <laughs> this is from the, uh, the Tamworth Country Music Time Souvenir Edition. And uh, I know that Bruce McCarthy got a lot of um, publicity on the could have beans after the Gimpy Master. Well, I think it's time for Bruce to step aside because here's a bio from another artist appearing at Tamworth. 
Greg Williams is a true all-rounder, a singer, songwriter, musician, entertainer with a wide range of musical appreciation accumulated in more than 20 years of playing, singing and just living life. Yeah. From humble beginnings in brass bands as a young cornet player through rock and roll and cabaret bands to country and country rock music, Greg is equally at ease, whether backing other people as a confident drummer, out front of a band himself, as a solo or singer, or writing and recording his own and others' songs. Greg has achieved a lot of success in vocal competitions in North Queensland, including a finalist in the 1991 beaten track Talent Quest at Tamworth and a grand finalist last year. He's a founding member of the Roadhouse Band, which won the Kmart Jazza Smith Talent Quest in Tamworth. Mm. So they're the kinds of people that are just coming out of the woodwork, the, the rich and varied artists that you can catch at a Tamworth festival. Beautiful, Chavs. I, I, See you next week, Greg. I wish I was, with, I wish I was there with you, Chavs. Yeah. yeah, well. Mm. Well, yeah. I think, you know, Bruce McCutcheon going to step aside because it's people like Greg Williams that you've got to keep your eye on. Right. Great new talent. And where can people see you this week at Tamworth? Up the long yard, pretty well exclusively, except for one gig at the West Tammy Leagues Club, West Tamworth. Uh, and what night of the week's that, Chams? The West Tammy's on the Friday and the long yard every other day. You're not on with that other great band, Bingo and Housey? Oh, I have to look for them, sorry, I didn't spot them. Beautiful. See you, Chaps. Thanks for, thanks for the chat, boys. See you next week. Good luck. Over. Yeah. Well, it was won by the West Quarter, won the toss, and, and Australia elected to bat in front of 71,261 fans who packed the MCG to watch what they hoped would be an exciting match. Australia started brilliantly, with Mark Taylor and David Boone taking 24 runs off the first four overs. Boone was first to fall with 19 runs, Anderson Cummings running him out. His thigh injury gave him some difficulty in running. Soon afterwards, Taylor went for 33, making him top scorer for Australia. A pull shot gave Ambrose at mid-on an easy catch. James was soon caught for a very small margin of five by Murray. <coughs> His fractured thumb with their innings, Australia lost 3 for 13 off 10 overs. For the fourth time in succession against the West Indies, Mark Waugh was run out, this time while batting with his brother Steve. Mark was run out by a strong throw from Gus Lee. The brothers only made 33 between them, as Steve was run out soon afterwards for 25. Border was next to go with only eight runs on the board. He was caught and bowled by a triumphant Carl Hooper. Healy gave Ambrose his first wicket with a sharp return catch. Dottermade soon followed for one, being caught off Ambrose. Matthews and Rifle started to score freely before Matthews became... McDermott was the last of the Australian batsmen to fall, being bowled by Hooper for one in the 48th over. At the break, many of the fans and players believed all was lost for Australia. However, the Aussies fought back. Australia started brilliantly in the field, with Matthews running across the pitch, turning and throwing his thumbs down, and the non-strikers end finding Hayne short for a duck. Simmons was caught by Mark Lawrence slips off the bowling of Dottermade for another duck. Richardson was caught by Rival, a fine leg off McDermott for five. In the first five overs, the West Indies had lost three for five. Australia's 100th stage. Then a partnership of 86 between Lara and Hooper broke Australia's back. Lara eventually fell for 60 to Mark Law's second catch off McDermott's bowling. Logie fell for seven, Hero's first catch off Rifle. When Murray was caught, Healy bowled rifle for one. Australia was back in the game. When the West Indies looked shaky, Hooper and Bishop steered them to victory. Jones dropped the catch he normally would have taken. The West Indies deserved to win, with Ambrose the player of the final series, taking three for 26 off 10 overs, which boosted the morale of the team's bowlers immensely. Other good bowlers, 33 off 9, and Hooper was 2 for 28 off 8.3. Some of the better bowlers for Australia were Dottermade with 2 for 19 off 10 overs, Rifle with 1 for 21 off 10 overs, and McDermott with 2 for 35 off 10. The umpires were Daryl Hare and Colin Timmins. Australia took 199 minutes and 47.3 overs to make 147. The West Indies took 188 minutes and 47 overs to defeat the Australians by four wickets. Here's a snippet of country football news. On Sunday, February 28th, New and New and South Football Club will host golf course at Edney's Farm. Also, they report the new football club rooms are coming along nicely and should be ready for the first game. It's, it's been a great weekend in sport. Sure has, Luke. 
Oh, you yeah. almost got it right. Now, you, now you've, got to, you've got to say it to him. Uh, well, Daniel, it's been a big weekend in sport. Okay, now do it that way. Well, Daniel, it's been a big weekend in sport. Absolutely, Rick. That's <laughs> that. Yeah, no. Sure has. was a bit light on it. Absolutely. I was whacking him that thing about near himself. Now, look, you've got something to say? This has been Luke Langland and Daniel Adams signing off for the Will Begin. Beautifully oh, done, boys. beautiful boy. Yeah, very good. I, either the do, do the teachers ever uh, suggest that you, do you ever get in a bit of trouble at school? A little troublemakers at all? Do you ever get kicked off at all? Or are you just angels oh, at no. school? Angels. Oh, Perfect. Yeah. 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 Now, I thought the uh, it was very good because you just stuck to the facts. You weren't, you know, some people say that so many people doing cricket commentary these days are passing judgment from up in the box. That's right. You're a couple of youngsters. Inexperienced, so you've seen better than to go starts. Although, you, you, without giving too much comment on them, it was very good. I enjoyed that comment. That's fair right. enough. Uh, did you have? Did you? Who did you give your player of the match to? Did they have a player of the match? Or not? They player of the series. Yeah, yeah, player, player, player of the final. Did you agree with Kurtley Ambrose as the choice? Um, uh, yeah, yeah, but Cole Hoop played pretty well too. Didn't he? Yeah, In very that good. Second game. Very good. That's excellent, and the people down near and south will be very happy with you too. <laughs> Daniel, now, what's that date again, Daniel? Uh, February 28th. And it, what is it again? Sunday. Golf no, day. Golf <laughs> day. Thank you very much. And you, I reckon you'll be hiding in the bushes coming out and knocking <laughs> off their golf balls. <laughs> <Pins in the ball. laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for that. So, uh, we've got to be yeah. uh, the... A bit like uh, Big Macs and Little Louie down there. <laughs> <isn't> <laughs> you couple of funny guys. And joining us now, Stuart. Yeah. Who's uh, also got a response? In so far as non sporting themes go. A musical theme. How old are you, Stuart? 13. 13. That means you were born about 1980? 79. 79. Uh, I've got class of 74. That'll do, Ian. This has actually got vocal, you see, with, with Caddy singing on it. Oh, no, better not go for that one. I've got to go for an instrumental. You want something instrumental? What about, what about, what about <laughs> Division 4? Oh, I've got to go. That's a fair way. What about uh, uh, Blankety Blanks? Yeah, that'll do. I can't remember how they went, actually. Let's have a look here. Yeah, I can fade it down. Thanks. All right. Stuart, Stuart I'll, you I'll ready to go you in. Report? Yep. Oh, you've got, you've got ready. your hands on. So, it, we, so I, I think probably the Luke and Daniel reports are sort of the one you'd see on the Three Squared Network. Yeah. I get the feeling Stuart's is a bit more... Yeah, ABC. ABC. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. All right, this, so here we go. Uh, CD2. Here we go. <laughs> Osborne reporting for the Could Have Been Champions and what a titanic week in sport it's been. Australia entered the second World Series final hoping to avenge their first final loss. They won the toss and elected to bat. The two openers got off to a good start but with the score on 54 a communication error resulted in Boone being run out. This brought local hero Dean Jones to the crease but his partnership with Taylor didn't last long when Mark was dismissed for 33, the highest score of the innings. Then they in display and his Murphy songs brought Bay 13 down. The Windies went into bat with an easy target in what should have been a one-sided contest, but Greg's songs must have really lifted our boys because in the second over, Haynes was run out for a duck, and later in the same over, Sin Simmons also joined him for another duck. Lara fought on for a while until Richardson was caught off a sky ball by rifle for five. Despite these wickets, the Windies' task was still an easy one, but the Aussie bowlers battled on, and after Lara survived a few close calls, he went on to create a handy partnership with Hooper, carrying the score along comfortably. But he didn't look at all comfortable when he copped the, copped the cricket ball in his box. Yet, he recovered only to get hit again by a stray ball aimed at the stumps, and he departed for a good contribution of 60 runs. Logie and Mara, Murray went in quick succession, but despite the interruption caused when four hoons ran on the ground, 
West Indies were home easily, with Hooper starring 59 not out. Ambrose was named player of the series for his five wickets in the first final and three in the second. And all credit should be go to the Aussie bowlers for their gallant performance, but the batsmen need to take a good hard look at themselves. <laughs> this is this is Stuart Osborne reporting. Stuart tag. Osborne reporting for the Quidditch Oh, well, very well Stuart. done. Just one word I've got to pick you up on, Stuart. Yes. Uh, I think you could insert the word insert the word alleged uh, just down here uh, where there was. Uh, a bit of an interruption when uh, four oh, alleged oh. hoons ran onto the ground, just in case they're listening. <laughs> but uh, did you, you you were at the game? Yep. And it, there wasn't much excitement, was there? Nah, those batting was pretty ordinary. <laughs> but mind you, the uh, the wicket had a bit of life in it early. Yeah. I don't think I'd like to have been facing uh, Curtly Ambrose when he, he did come on to bowl. Did you go to the other one day games? The one against Pakistan or no. the one last December? No. So it was just a bit. Yeah. First time, big thrill? Yeah. Where were you? Good. Where were you seated? Uh, Southern Stand. Southern Stand, yeah. Good good spot viewing from over there. It was a great yeah. night. And you enjoyed the ditties in the dinner break. Yeah. Yep. Mm. It was good. Karaoke. The karaoke on the <laughs> board. Yeah, did you sing did you sing along? Oh, uh, kind of. Kind of, yeah. People that, there were a lot of people just mouthing the words sort of into their pie wrappers. <laughs> No, it was a great night and a, and a wonderful report. Did you, what, did you want to get into sort of media or anything like that in the future, uh, be a reporter? I know, if there's money. <laughs> oh, if no, there's money. No, there's, no. there's not a Zach in it. <laughs> not a Zach. All right, look, we, uh, we thank uh, Stuart coming in from Glen Waverley. You, and enjoy the rest of your holiday, Stuart. You've got a bit longer yeah, to go, of course. And uh, Luke and Daniel, Daniel making the long trip in from Warragul. Thanks. Who, who drove? Uh, my dad. Dan dad. Daniel's dad? Right. Yeah. How old's your dad? Ah, uh, you? Yeah, well, he's, he, you can just listen to Bobby and Laurie when they come in all the way home. Won't that be good fun? And, oh, and really. uh, Dad will tell you all about Bobby <laughs> and Laurie. <laughs> Dad, yeah, you'll, have you got a cassette player in your car? Yep. So you'll be wanting to whack on a bit of Gunners while you're going home? No. No? Really. no? Who's your favourite, Daniel? Oh, I haven't got one, really. In, in pop music? Stuart? No, no, really. No? Luke? Luke? Oh. Sort of a bit. Ooh. You too. You too. Now, if you two ever come to Australia, would you two go and see you two and uh, give us a report on them? If we had tickets. <laughs> Ronnie, can you organise tickets for the boys to see you two when they come to Australia? <laughs> All right, trouble. Look, thanks, thanks for coming in. And indeed, if you would like to be heard by 148 stations right throughout Australia on a Sunday night, right to Could Have Been Champions Cub Reporter, care of the Could Have Been Champions, uh, Post Office Box 9994. GPO Melbourne 3001. Just quickly, let's go around the panel before we say goodnight to Luke, Daniel and Stuart, given they are now cricket experts. Yes, indeed. The test match in Adelaide, uh, Australia 3 for 100, chasing 252. There's been a lot of rain interruptions. Do you think we'll get a result? Luke? Yeah, I reckon. And who do you think will win? Uh, Australia just. Just. Uh, just. Daniel? Only just. Only just. Uh, if Australia get a move on. If they get a move on. It, so so you're, sending a, you're sending a stern warning to Alan Border? Yeah, if they had to pick Dean James instead of Langer. <laughs> He's got controversial now. Yeah. Oh, hard hitting. Yeah. And uh, Stuart? Oh, Australia, if they can get a move on and get the spinners who play a big part in the second innings. So they should. I think oh, they're playing them this time. So it's lovely to see. Oh, actually, they've got, they've got a spinner in the side. Oh, two spinners. Thanks, Luke, Daniel and Stuart, our cab reporters for tonight. And uh, don't forget, before 9 o'clock, Tony's Guns N' Roses tribute. Yes, indeed. Stand by for that one. A bit more country music here. And, uh, <laughs> no, no more Billy Ray. Now, this is a great Australian band, this one. Who is it, Ian? It's the Dingoes. And, uh, are they way out west? Are they boys on the run? They're singing about the boys on the run. <laughs>
Guns N' Roses tribute. I have indeed, Ian, and I just think it's a not to acknowledge the, the presence of, of the, the world's premier rock and roll band. They did make a big statement. I mean, premier, I think I'll agree with. World? Is that the problem? Yeah, no, no, no. I, I want you to go bigger. Are they bigger than the Rolling Stones? Are they... You said KLF would be bigger than the Beatles. <laughs> I think Guns N' Roses already are bigger than a lot of people. They, they are indeed. I thought to myself, well, look, the ABC just pro provides quality radio from sun up to sundown into the night and in the early morning. Well, of course they're bigger than the Rolling Stones. At the Rolling Stones from time to time. The point is, the Rolling Stones have been there for 30 years. Will Guns N' Roses be around for 30 years? Tony, come on. Well, we'll, we'll be talking about them in 300 years. Yeah, well, there you go. They Th are this big. is what we will we'll, we'll, we'll be able to see the Call the Pack concert uh, from the moon. Oh, oh no oh, doubt. Oh. You can see Calder Park when they've got the Holdens and the Fords going round there. And of course... Uh, Is the it at the old Calder or at the, uh, the, 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 um... The Dome. No, I saw a map in the paper mm. for the Melbourne concert, and they're actually playing in the, the old car racing part at the top end of it, you know, before they swing mm. into the straight? Yeah. Is Conrod... Uh, <laughs> the, yeah, no, that's the, the other one. Uh, and, and we'll get Rod from Linfield yes. in uh, about an hour's time to give us a rundown on, on the, the plans for their Sydney... Yes, and, and in fact, uh, Rod, other gigs, if they're on, right around Australia, because I haven't done that much homework on... In making your tribute. <laughs> well, right. Axel and Slash and Duff and the two others that are in the group. <laughs> they're gonna, okay, Tony. They're, gonna, they're, they're going to have a lot of tributes paid to them through rock and roll stations right throughout the length and breadth of Australia. But I've put together this uh, marvellous tribute to... <laughs> Go. Yeah, you, uh, you, didn't see, you, you didn't really can see why they've taken the world by storm. Well, a lot of people would have thought to themselves, gee, we're never going to get to hear the Guns N' Roses on, uh, on the ABC. Well, you have now, <laughs> that's all I can say. What song is that from, Tony? Is that, or is that a medley? Is that a uh, compilation you put together? That's the, uh, the first hit, Sweet Child O' Mine, um, <laughs> from, from the massive hit album... Oh. Hey, Chris, what's the name uh, of the album? Appetite uh, for Destruction. That's it, Appetite yeah. for Destruction. Those well, heavy metal bands, they always have such appealing titles to their songs, don't they? Well, is Guns N' Roses heavy metal? Are they heavy metal? Well, we can discuss this, but I think it's probably best left to ten past ten tonight mm. to discuss the <laughs> theological matters of that. Is that what they'll be talking about after ten o'clock tonight? <laughs> is Guns, is and Guns N' Roses heavy metal, or are they rock and roll? Actually, I uh, watched their performance on... The Rage, yesterday morning. What time? Gee, you must have been up at... Oh, not November rain again. Oh, it's... it's I think it's still a, yeah, it's top, a top ten. Top ten. Top two weeks. Oh, no. And I had a real good look at it. Oh, no, not yesterday. too many songs get released into Columbia. Oh, you wouldn't like to be just oh, distributing the records over there. No. No? It's his bad hombre place over there. Although, you have travelled, Simon. I yeah, I haven't been to Columbia, though. Yeah, go on. Oh, no, I just watched them yesterday morning, because normally I have the sound down on that one. Yeah. But, uh... No, I've got to agree. It is an epic and an opus into the bargain. And the film clip. What's it all about? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know you can say that about every film clip, but I think there's some are worse than others, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, they, they're very good at it, though. They really have... They do everything. Yep. And, um, and there is none bigger than that one. So I worked for about eight hours just doing all my research. Yeah. And uh, did a payoff cove. Oh, it was oh. fantastic. Was it? Oh, oh look, I... It meant a lot to me. Tony, in fact, look, you've made a big statement. Yes. You said you said how big they are and all. Why don't you put yourself to the uh, to the test? Yes. By uh, perhaps taking some calls. Would you be prepared to take some calls? But believe it or not, are the, are the lines up, Ian? Or or is the the rain here caused us to? Well, I just uh, don't know whether the champs used up all the lines ringing from Tamworth or not. But, um, look, I'll play a very short time to get organised. Right. Would you like to hear mental as anything? Love to, Ian. Okay. Oh, if you leave me. And then we'll take Guns N' Roses talk back. Yeah, we'll leave about a minute and a half for that.
I'm just trading down minerals anyway. Thought you did too. a good job on the fade, Simon. I, I think you've got to be definite with your fades. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, are, are you uh, taking the calls tonight? I'm taking the calls again. Right. It was so popular, my um, my job on the calls, that uh, I thought I'll sit in again for uh, Jeff. I'll just put some music away or something. I'll sort out some letters. Thanks, Gabby. We've done a good job of getting rid of that uh, mail backlog group tonight, too. Oh, we have done well, haven't we? Have we done one yet? Yeah, I've done one. You did one. But, uh, okay, five minutes to nine on ABC Radio right around Australia. And we'll take the first call you're talking to, Tony. Hello. G'day, Tony. Yeah, who's this? G'day, Tony. It's John Farnham. Oh, g'day, John. How are you? (laughs) You look, you sound chipper. I believe you're up at uh, the rest of the Gunners. Yes, mate, that's right. Yeah, I, I, look, I know, I look, I, I, I love people that work hard and I love people that, that do their job, you know, and, and I strive and so does Glenn yeah. to put in a really good, you know, a really good performance, what, whatever pursuit you're after. But when it comes to relaxation, mate, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know, the fishing up at Hayman, mate, you can't beat it. Uh, Hamilton? Ham- oh, that's right. Yeah. Hamilton, Hayman, it was a bit like just doing gigs. Now, um, how have the boys been behaving themselves up there on the island? Well, you know, mate, it's, 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 it's okay. Um, Robbie's been good. No, 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 no. no. with the bed. No, uh, no, no, the biggest stars on the island. Uh, you're self-withstanding. Yeah, well, see, Glenn said to stay away from him, you know. <laughs> no, real, no, sincerely, he said, he said, Farnsey. <laughs> no, he did. He said, mate, he said, you've got to really go in with, with a clear mind and into the new year and, and see as the less performers, mate, he said, you see, the better. I don't know what his theory is on that, but... I, I agree with him because you know what? What? He's like a brother. Yes, I'm... And, and I've got to believe everything he says. No, I, no really, sincerely, I do. That, so that... I, I'm not going to go and see him. No, no. <laughs> you're not jaundiced at all that they're playing in front of seventy or 80,000 at Calder. Look, I, I have Robbie and the bride and Glenn in a dinghy. And we go out and we catch a cray and we catch a... a we try and catch Marlin, you know, but... Uh, in a oh, dinghy? Well, that's right, a little, you know, a little mercury airport on the back, you know. Yeah, all right. But see, you do have to unwind, mate. You can't be surrounded by hundreds of thousands of people like your good self. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, I don't know what you think, mate, but I, I think Glenn's theory is is, is uh, pretty close to the close to the mark. Yeah, no, no, yeah, no, yeah. No. Uh, right, okay. And just one other question: the the film clip November Rain. Yes, mate. Have you seen it on the telly? No, no, mate. Glenn's band telly. Uh, I'm not allowed to. I'm off the drink. Radio? No radio. This is. I, I've got one. Tele, I've got three telephone calls a day, mate. And this is one of them. And this is one of them. And also, I, I, I've got about. I've got one video for the whole holiday. What's that? Well, I haven't made up my mind yet because you know it's uh, pretty. What do you suggest to him, mate? You know, really. Well, no, I really can't, John. Look, look, the, look. Thanks for finding time to talk to us on this hot topic. Thanks very much uh, for ringing, John. But we'll have to go to the next call. You're talking to Tony. Hello. Hello, Tony. Yes, who's this? It's Buffalo. I remembered you as my greatest fan B- and friend. DJ, lovely to uh, to. Uh, oh, you've got a bit of uh, fumbling the telephone, the old receiver there. That's right, Tony. Yeah, now uh, are you working at the moment? No, I'm not, Tony. Uh, That's why I'm ringing you. Right. First of all, I've got to help me, Tony. Yeah, I'd uh, love to. Two minutes tonight on ABC Radio Run right Australia. Yeah. Tony's talk back coming to you as a segment right now. Yeah. Stay tuned for mailbag about midnight. <laughs> what can I help you with? Tony! Yeah. Two weeks running. Yeah. Jeff hasn't been there. Right. Thought you might have given me a call. I'm not working. I could have come in and been the anchor man tonight and spot him in for you. Done the time calls. Yeah. And uh, entered into your... Well... Jeff's not in, BJ. All right, Tony. Now, second thing. Yeah. Next week, Guns N' Roses. You've been talking about them, Tony. Yeah. Probably my favourite band in the whole world. Right. They're fantastic, Tony. Yeah. Do you know who's doing their on-stage announcements for their concerts around Australia? <laughs> no, I'm not sure. Tony? Yeah? In uh, three words, yeah. I am available. Right. How would, I'd love to introduce them. How would you introduce uh, Guns N' Roses? I'd say, ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome one of the best bands in the world? In fact, the best band in the world, Guns N' Roses. You gotta, yeah, you got to put in something about the such-and-such such corporation in association with Gadinsky and Frontier, I think. I'd probably go with something Tony, like, you know... Hey, here they are, the Gunners, and they're Stunners. <laughs> no, and look, yeah. Axel Rose is wearing runners. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's still very at ten past seven breakfast time. Yeah, I was going to wake that up as a joke for you, Tony, but well, no, look, I'll, I'll, okay, I'll, I'll, can, 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 can I just, can, well, we'll just go off the news. Well, BJ, it's been a big weekend in sport. Yes, and Tony, yeah. what do you get if the uh, lead singer of a big band 
yeah. wears uh, running shoes on stage and turns in a marvellous performance. Uh, what do you get? You've got the lead singer of the Gunners in Runners, and they're a bunch of stuff, Yeah. You, you can't find out for me. I'd love to work with them. We'll do our very Thanks best. Thanks very much, BJ, for ringing in. I can send phone calls in the weather report while I'm on stage at the same time. Thank so. you. Thank you. Yep. And it's just coming up to uh, 9 o'clock here on ABC Radio, and we'll be back after the news. Back to the could have been champions at five past nine. I don't know whether it was in all news services that you were getting around Australia then, but uh, certainly in the one we were listening to, the news for marathon event that he's gone over there to compete in. And uh, and isn't that fantastic that uh, Steve bounced back so well after the shocking slagging he was given by people such as Ian Cover? Oh, Yes. I never. In the grand final uh, football show. Anyway, well, he broke the world record by 18 years. Yeah, and good on you, Stephen. No, we, we've never dropped off you, even if your friends oh, no, such as Ethan Cover have. And actually, I must apologise, because uh, I was going to organise to have him on the line from Japan tonight, because knowing that it was being run sort of like in morning Australian time. In fact, I'm surprised it wasn't in the big weekend in sport. But it's finally popped it over into enormous. Anyway, I will make a promise here and now to ABC listeners. We'll talk to him next week. No, uh, in one, two, three, in three weeks' time, February the 14th, mm -hmm. Mono runs a marathon. This will be his first marathon since the Olympic marathon. Mm -hmm. At the Tokyo marathon, in fact, he'll be back in Japan. He comes home for a little spell after this half marathon. He goes back in three weeks' time and runs the Tokyo marathon. On a Sunday, we will have him on that night. All right? Win, lose, or draw. Good on you, E. Now, I'm going to mention a letter because... Might be best if we forget about him. He wins, then. <laughs> oh, no, no. Because when we have rung before, it's been... Uh, whether you think about him or... I mean, look, you can't win every race, can if you? If you're listening, Mona, or s can you give us a call? We're here till 10 o'clock. I have to mention a letter from Ian Day, which I haven't been hanging on to for very long, but uh, Ian tells um, a combination of travel stories and cabaret. Mm -hmm. He tells... Um, he, he thought he had to let, to write to let us know that... Uh, now, he's from Aspendale in Victoria. And he says uh, he and his wife were travelling around India and the hotel they were staying in Delhi, an Indian cabaret band. And when they got to Delhi the first time, they went in. They didn't, they didn't get a chance to really take the band through their paces. But they did walk by as the band was doing Valare. Beautiful. So they knew that uh, they were the goods. And then when they came back, they were able to uh, they were able to enjoy sets such as this one. Rivers of Babylon. Beautiful. Into Sounds of Silence. Mm. Into Those Were the Days. Those were... Mary Hopkin. That was strange. I oh, don't know. I think that... Into a medley of... And this would go rather well, I think, at the uh, at the wedding, when the bride and groom are going around the circle opposite ways. As it's normally uh, good old Collingwood forever, in to pack up all your kids yeah. and woes. Oh, I've got a lovely bunch, bunch of, of coconut. coconut. That's well, right. Well, they've gone camp down races. Yeah. Buddha, Little Brown Jug. Yes. Yellow Rose of Texas. Oh, Susanna, and Saints Go Marching In. Oh, I'd, I'd a good. Not bad, yeah, I thought. good set. So, um, thanks very much for that letter, Ian. Thanks. For Michael Ray from the World Wildlife Fund for Australia, a tax deductible, as Michael's um, letter points out, but uh, he was at the show at um, Constable, mm -hmm. and um, as we've heard, it's not just patrons or not just fans who are at the concert hall know that we always have a... We've ha had a strong affection for the red velvet bag with the chocolate scorched almonds <laughs> inside. Going you out, have. Yeah. Going out very reasonably priced at the uh, Art Centre down in Melbourne. And um, Michael has taken the trouble to write to us to uh, send us the red velvet bag he purchased on the night. And uh, the use by date had expired. Oh, no. What did it say? 82. And, uh, well... Actually, that raises a very interesting question, Tony. One that could perhaps be referred to our very good friend Alan Fowles. Yes. Mm -hmm. the, the difference between a use by date and a best by date. Best before. Or best before. That's I think it a bit, isn't it? Well, I think it goes back to um, originally there were some products where they very much balked at the use by hmm. because they don't necessarily deteriorate if, um, like chocolates, one if it's stored correctly, I don't think it necessarily deteriorates. Because, see, see, for mine, 
a use-by date means after that or is a bit each way. way. Yeah, very true, very true. I just want to quickly mention uh, Steve Helwig from uh, Dianella WA who has sent us a um, an advertisement for the Burswood Casino. Oh, yes. yes. With uh, advertising an act Advertising. <laughs> advertising. Advertising. <laughs> advertising. Yeah. What a big yeah. word. Ad that goes into the dictionary. I'll get out of it. Yeah, that's... Advertising an act direct from the USA, mm. allegedly all singing, all dancing, all comedy. Yeah, I'm... So I don't know how... Mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> tap, tap, tap. Anyway, all singing, all dancing, hey, all comedy. On. Yeah. And if, uh, if Steve Helwig of Dianella... Yeah. can get back to us. Hmm. Perhaps you saw this, or anyone else in Perth, who saw the, uh, the all singing. I wasn't going to mention their comedy. names no, while packing the... No, if you, anyone saw that act... Well, actually, it's on, as we, it's on this week. Well, well, we can mention the act, I think. Yes, it's... Uh, Jeff Hobson, direct from the USA, and Frank Newell. Four show, shows only at the showroom, 27, 28, 29 and 30th of January. And I, week. I wouldn't mind betting that a few funny things happen to them on the way to the Burnwood Casino. It's pretty hard to see. You just go straight down St George's <laughs> Terrace and turn right, I think. <laughs> there aren't too many pitfalls awaiting so uh, from Perth Central to Burnwood. Now, a lot of people go to trouble when sending us letters from their workplaces to obscure uh, the workplaces on the envelopes. And... Um, James and Janet, it's probably James, it might be Janet, have gone to, the, it's gone to a fair bit of trouble to obscure the fact that, uh, I don't know why, but they're using envelopes produced by the trafficking, by the traffic, by the traffic licensing and services section of the police department. Huh. Huh. <laughs> well, Allegedly. 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 And they sent in a very good letter. They went on a... Uh, they were inspired by Chris Marsh's cub report last week to write. Oh, yes. Can I just say hello also to Wally McMillan of uh, Bell Divers, is it? Or Bell Divers in WA? Yeah, Bell Divers. Bell Divers. He's Bell Divers. Yeah, he's also been inspired by Chris, uh, Chris Marsh's report of... Life. But how about this one? James yep. and Janet went on a two-and-a-half-year holiday around Australia, 823 days, 50,648 kilometres, and they sent him a number of magic moments. Um, the first one they, they mentioned, it was at Yulara Caravan Park on Sunday, the 7th of January 1991, where uh, they listened to um, our program from the HMAS Melbourne. Yes. Yeah. Remember that one? They got it direct for an hour and a half, then lost the signal searched for it and got the start of the show again coming from Adelaide. All right. Searched the dial again and then heard the second half on CWF from Perth so that they heard the show in three separate time zones. On a point of order, Mr Whelan. Is I that think, possible? I think it was the HMAS, HMAS Brisbane we were on. In Melbourne. Perth in Melbourne. That's correct. correct. We just like so that. thanks for all of those people who've written and mm. uh, we'll try to mention all the others as well. I had a few too, but I managed to work... Wally McMillan in there. Thanks for your letter, Wally. Uh, I've got some others. We'll get around to them. But we must uh, get on with talking to two icons of Australian Do music, right. Bobby and Laurie, who are uh, joining us now. And just to let them make their way into the studio, we'll, uh, we'll play a tune by the, the uh, popular duo, and we'll be talking to them. Oh, yes, this one. Love this.
comes another car. As he slows down, this guy gets... There's a car drifting off into the distance yes, with a hitchhiker on board and someone playing some very, very hot and almost psychedelic guitar, Ian. Now, what year is that? What year do you think that is? 1966. Good get, Ian. That's uh, because I read the album cover. Oh, terrific. Can I just tell you something about this particular group and then we're going to bring them to life.